Hi, I'm Glenn Southern, and my role today is to give you a 30 minute look at how we use a Gravity Sketch in VR. Um, and Gravity Sketch is an amazing VR creation program that we've been using for about three years now. Um, so my give you some background on me. So my studio is a we're a small studio in the northwest of England. And we do a lot of TV and um, smaller film and uh, a little bit of game uh, asset creation. So we do 3D models for a wide range of clients. And half of the business is about teaching people what we what we do. So I specialize in ZBrush. I've taught ZBrush for 21 years now, and I've always um, focused on organics. And anything to do with organic shapes and creatures, characters, environments, uh, some vehicles, some ships, um, and um, generally it's got some kind of organic flow to it. So it's usually, you know, it's it's less about buildings and, and, and harder edge things, and much more to do with rounded shapes. So we teach that. Um, I teach that at a studio that I've got uh, up in uh, near Chester, um, and it's it's probably in, in its tenth year of of that studio now. So with the advent of COVID, we decided to move online, and we're doing much more with mobile uh, ways of sculpting, like on the iPad and with um, Wacom Mobile Studio Pros and stuff like that. So we're teaching people a way of getting into to our industry and, and, and developing their skills in in new and exciting ways. So that, that's what we're focusing on this year. So what, what we're gonna look at today is a, a build that I'm doing for a client that wants a, a snow vehicle. So it is for a live project and it is for a movie and the client has allowed me to, to, to use this today um, simply because it shows how we would bash out some, some of these kind of quick concepts for the early stages of, of concept art. So what do I mean by that? So quite often we'll start with drawings, sketches, well we'll be given drawings and sketches or we'll do them ourselves and we'll work up loads and loads of ideas for a given concept. So in this one we need a snow bike of some kind. So I quite often now and probably for about two years now I've started in VR and what we do is we, we move through a sequence of sketching, creating volumes, then doing some basic modeling and then throwing that into other programs like Maya and Cinema 4D and, and, and even Blender now. So that's what we're gonna show really. So I'm gonna dive straight into um, Gravity Sketch and show you how we would approach a project like this. So there's a number of ways that I start in Gravity Sketch. So this one that I use the most is a room that we designed right at the start of when um, co-creation became uh, um, uh, available to us to beta test with Gravity Sketch. And it's a room where myself and all the team members jump in and we, we either design together or I art direct or I am art directed, depending on who's in the room with me. So at the moment, obviously, it's just myself. Um, I have a table that I've, I've it's just basic poly, polygonal modeling for a table and walls and then I put my art around the room. Now Gravity Sketch has got, you know, it's got lots of layer uh, capabilities with transparency so you can put your walls on one layer, have your models on another layer, um, uh, have the characters that you're working with on another, sketching on another and then they can all be changed um, so you can have them transparent, you can have them fully opaque, you can have them semi-transparent if you want to work with things like glass and faking things like that. But what I like to do is have, I bring all my mood boards in so if I'm just collecting references from the internet or from clients or from sketches we've done I just pop them all um, in as images, just import them in, and then just pop them on the walls. Um, what I'm doing there at the moment is I'm just making a pointer. So quite often I want to be able to point to um, a particular part of the of the uh, wall or the model. And the coloured dots on the floor there is where I just say to people, "I'll just you know let's go over to the purple dot or wall number one." Or it's just just different ways to identify where we are in the room. So the, the core process that I use with Gravity Sketch is we sketch first of all. So even though it's, it's, it's core uh, modeling, I like to be able to sketch out what, what I'm doing in 3D. So the black lines that you can see are just little ink or either ink or stroke lines. And I'll put in a character usually. So this is going to be a bike so I know what scale I'm working to or a trike, should I say. So these are mannequins built in with um, like armature points. They're no use as rigged models after. 
you can't take them out and use them as a, as a base to model over or anything like that. They're just a really cool way of referencing a human scale in, inside a gravity sketch. Um, and they've got uh, basic articulation points. So, um, and with a flick of your thumb to the left, you can get rotational control over it as well. So I'm just thinking now, all I'm doing there is just thinking about how would I want the, the driver or rider to sit um, the client did specify that he wants two people on the vehicle, so I'm going to have to put two, you know, a two-man seat or two-woman seat. Um, so I'm just thinking about scale at the moment. So I definitely know that one of the brief um, requirements was to have two sleds at the front. So I've picked all the references offline that I can, where it's a, a you know a two sleds or two you know two tracks at the front and one at the back. Um, the client didn't want wheels, so I'm just in this first sort of iteration. What I was looking at is where to put an engine, where to put handlebars, how big would the the rider be, um, you, you know, what seating position would I want? Would I want him upright and sat back like a chopper, or would I want him lying forward like he's over a um, like a bike, um, like a tank of a bike, something like that? So I've made those choices really quickly, and th and this is where. Um, VR and specifically gravity sketch is great for me because I'm just making choices really really quickly so I'm not having to redraw something I'm just moving that model around and, and getting my scaling points really really quickly so if I sketch out a seat and I don't like it I just pick up the sketch lines and move them so it's a real at this point in the sketch phase it's a real mix of 2D and 3D, and that's where it's really powerful. Now, you don't need to be in, in, in a room environment like I am. I just find that when I'm doing um, uh, meetings with my team, I like to be in a grounded space, so I put the walls up there um, just, to, just to help me understand where we are in, in a space. And it's great just to do like I was doing then, just point to a particular bit of a reference from a photograph or another model that I've seen that I like, or when I know that somebody's you know made a particular thing that, that 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 would work well for our designs, I might bring that in, and then just run over and point to it and discuss why I like it and why it's useful. So you can see in just a couple of minutes, I would have blocked out the shape um, that I might want to try. Um, and, and it's rough, it's really, really rough. So we then move to the next phase, which is just what we call a volume block out. And all I do here is I just grab, there's a, there's a tool called the volume tool, and you can use it in two ways, just to create shapes like rocks, or you can literally do what I'm doing there, which is just, just drawing on a plane and then extruding out from the plane. Now it is nerves based, and that means that it's spline based. So what that means is it's when it comes out, it's going to be very tri triangulated. So it's not amazing geometry to, to then go and work on. It's absolutely fine if you're, if you're not bothered about animation and you're not bothered about subdivision. Then all of this spline-based modeling, the nerves or sub nerve surfaces, is absolutely fine. Um, there is a subdivision modeling in there, so you can do good old-fashioned raw polygon modeling, um, and I do love that. I do, but I do that at a much later stage. That's much more for a modeler who's going to make this actually work properly rather than the concept stage. Um, so uh, at this point now, I've got a good idea of the overall block out of the of the of the um, vehicle. So I'm just thinking now have I got it right? So let's have a look at some silhouettes is, is where I would be. So I would now start taking internal photographs of the shapes and I'd do front, side, back and I'd probably at that point I might even throw them out to either one of my team or to or to um, you know to my iPad for a sketch over or I might I might put them in Photoshop and do it on the Wacom and, and kind of you know, just thrash out more of a detail of what I want on there. So it really is an evolution of, of VR, 3D, 2D, back and forth. But what I've found over the, the few years I've been doing this sort of method is I can get answers to questions really quickly. So it's almost like I'm doing draw overs and annotations live in VR. And that's what where the liberation of, of or, or, or where I find I'm faster and more efficient is because I can get answers to questions and solutions really, really quickly by just sketching a bit in 3D, throwing it around, and then popping it out to a 3D image. And there, what I've done is I've taken, it used to be called Quad Draw in Sketch. I think it's been renamed now. 
but I basically just take photographs inside of VR and just leave them hanging in the air. Um, and it just helps me make those really important decisions. Having uh, a room um, is one way to do it. Uh, but you can just hang your reference images in the air or have no reference images whatsoever, depending on how clean of a working environment that you like. So this is a, a later iteration of the same project where I'd, I went back and, and tried some, some new ideas, some new shapes. Um, and I didn't bother because I knew I was going to just be in this room myself. So I started with a completely blank canvas, brought in uh, one of the models for uh, as a base reference and then put in some more... Uh, reference images that I was I was enjoying or liking for for this particular time. Now, uh, th th this is this is uh, a part where those um, mannequins become really really useful because now I'm really building around them, and you can see there I'm I'm using a different color. Um, and as much as there's no render option in a Gravity Sketch, it's really crucial that you do use different shaders or different material colors. And there's a, there's a really good reason for that. So firstly, while you're designing, it might be really important to have a specific color. So I, I knew that the, the back end of this vehicle wanted to, to have a strong red and the trike part of the front needs to be a strong red. So in my own eye, as I'm designing, it's good to go as close to the, the, the end colors of, uh, of how it will be rendered, just, just simply because it makes me um, design better, knowing that the color's roughly along the right lines. But more importantly than that, when you leave Gravity Sketch, every single color has got an ID and you can select in certain other programs like Maya and, and Cinema, um, I can select by material type. So everything that's got that red or that material, I can then select. So if I know I'm going to do a lot of uh, uh, car body paint or uh, like, like that red, or if there's going to be a lot of chrome or iron or, or, or you know, wires that are going to be a specific color then each specific group or each specific um, um, item that wants to be rendered when I'm out of gravity sketch I give that its own color it's like an I suppose it's like an object ID really in something like 3d studio max it just allows me to select by material when I'm outside of gravity sketch so fundamentally it doesn't matter while you're in gravity sketch I suppose apart from the fact that it's nice to see um, it looking roughly like it's going to when it's out. The important part is that I've I identified it for later. Now this is a tool that I, this is the volume tool that I used earlier in the presentation, and it's it's now snapped to a plane. So I'm just drawing points, and those points are really just an outline. And when I release them or join the the end, they will snap together and make a volume that that would give me sort of like a metalwork. And I use this a ton, so this is this is something I, I use to rough out. The, the reason I like it is because um, rather than just being volume blocks of geometry, what it's giving me is more intricate metalwork or, or if I'm looking for things like um, indents, I'm not having to do full polygonal subdivision modeling. I can just bash out shapes that could later on they would be made correctly, but this would give me something to model to. The geometry isn't nice when it comes out. It's triangulated, as you would expect from a from a NURBS based solution. Any anything like Fusion three hundred and sixty or a, a, any, depending on you know what background you've got, Rhino, anything that you export from a from a CAD based program, um, whether they're step files or IGES files, they're going to have a triangulation issue unless you're really really you know you, unless you know a way to to solve that. Um, so really, the geometry you're going to get isn't going to be um, uh, good usable geometry straight out of the box. You're going to have to do something to it. Uh, uh, that's for the nerb space one. So the volume tool, the sketching, the ink, the stroke, they're all you know points based or nerbs based. Um, there is full on subdivision modeling, as I keep saying, and we'll show that in a moment. But for this kind of geometry, it's not going to come out the way that you would definitely like it. So it's it it will be a bunch of triangles. Um, and you have to just be, be aware of that. So it's fine for rendering. It's fine, you know. It's fine to, to, you know, when we get it into the next program, you'll see what I mean. But it, it's not. Um, don't be thinking that you're going to get good, clean geometry to work with. But if most of this work is for concepting, and I'm just trying to create shapes and volumes, and and, and you know, does the silhouette read correctly? Then 
it doesn't really matter to me. I'm not really looking for good geometry in, in any shape or form at the moment. I'm looking for, does this uh, design work? And I'm exploring those ideas of, you know, how does the axle work? Does it need some kind of um, a suspension? And at the minute, with the red and with the, with the points, as you, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making a metal framework um, that will allow me to, to get somewhere towards the kind of reference that I'm thinking about so it, it's a it's a snow bike it doesn't want large chunks of metal in it it needs to have things that are lightweight so obviously a lightweight metal frame or aluminium frame would be what I was aiming for so this would be a painted aluminium frame um, and you'll see that all through the bike is it's like a grid um, and they're the kind of decisions and, and, and design questions that are going through my head as, I, as I'm modeling this sort of stuff it, and because you're um, in the room with the vehicle, um, we, and we haven't done it in this exercise, but the, 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 one of the big things is that being in that room, I could literally sit on that bike. And if I could sit on the bike, then I can work out you know, more design um, problems because I can look down from where the clocks are on the bike, for example, or I could look down and say, right, do my uh, handlebars uh, hold, you know, are they in the right position for the kind of, you know, ride that, that this vehicle is going to give me? And they're, they're the things that, again, you'll hear me do that, um, or you'll see me do that in this case over and over again. So I've kind of worked out the front end, uh, and still there's not much detail at all. But if you were, you know, if you, if, you know, this is an easy thing to say, but if you just unfocus your eyes, you can start seeing um, the shapes um, that I want. So there I'm looking at some reference and thinking, right, do I need more kind of an organic curve or do I need to think about um, how much more volume I put in with that red before I move on to something else? Uh, and again, I, I, I do use reference for everything. I'm, I'm a big reference user, so I'll, I'll, I'll search the internet. I'll find, I'll take photographs myself out in the street. I'll go and do research. Um, I'll, I'll watch movies and freeze frame the movies and say, right, I like the way that that shape works. And I'm always looking for things to, to, to add to my designs um, in the real world uh, in lots of different ways. So this is the Revolve tool. Um, and if you ever want pipe work, straight pipe work, or if you want wheels or nuts or bolts, or in this case, this is going to be um, some kind of a suspension. So I'm building forks basically. So I've gone and just built with points, I'm laying down a shape and it's doing a revolve like you would expect in any of your, your, your other kind of programs. Um, and that's pretty much exactly the same as any uh, NURBS based pr program there. I've just laid down the CVs and uh, control vertices and then just revolved it around, does it automatically. Um, and then I've moved on, changed the color. And, and again, remember what I said a minute ago is that I would do that because now that's going to be Chrome. And I've defined that as a, in my head at this point. I've, I've said, right, that color now, if I do any more chrome, I will just pick that color. And that means that I, I know that, that when I pop that into to cinema, I just have to throw a chrome type material. I, I use Redshift for a lot of my work. If I'm, I'm, I'm more recently Blender with EV and Cycles. But Redshift is my go-to um, for commercial work. So, uh, and with Redshift, I've got a lot of, you know, it's very easy to make a, like a chrome or a, a platinum or those kind of materials with a, with a couple of clicks and then just adjust them. So you can see there I'm, I'm, I'm using the same tool. I'm just making more interesting shapes. And again, we've done, we've done some nice volume metal work, but now it's nice to do some more structured um, uh, things like suspension and the axles, if, the, if there were axles in it. Um, this this particular part is going to be um, part of the handlebar, and I'll also reuse it later for the peg to put your feet on. But you can see there, I've I've got started with a white, which will be um, aluminium, and then um, or probably you know another another different coloured chrome, and then I've gone black for the handle grip. Um, and then I'll just pop that in roughly where the hands are and that allows me to start thinking about you know the, the, the position of you know where the hands are and, and I've got them wrong at this point so um, but while I was on the revolve tool then I'm, I'm just I'm just using um, that over and over again so the forks will get reused quite, quite often what I will do is off screen I'll make a, my own kit bash pack 
So as I've made a, um, you know, if I make one um, like that a fork, then I will, I'll just literally leave one at the side and that can be used throughout the entire project. I'm not much of a kit basher personally. I like to, to make my own stuff and, and use it. So you very rarely see me kit bashing. Um, and I do, you know, I, it's great for if you have to get shapes out quickly, but in, in these kind of programs, I like to, I like to just, um, you know, use the the tools that are available to me. Uh, I I have I often find it slower to um, to go and kit bash because I can just make the shapes. Because this isn't for 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 finished geometry. I'm not trying to spend hours making a crafted model. I'm just looking for shapes here. Um, so really, you know, I, I don't generally use kit bash stuff. So this now is um, the next big change. So this is now subdivision modeling. So basically forget everything I've said about modeling up to this point because this is true polygonal geometry and you just go into your primitives and you bring in anything and tell it whether it's going to be um, a nerves based or, or, a, or a polygonal based. Now the way you know that is if when you hit the blue button on your non-dominant hand you get points or vertices rather than uh, vertices rather than um, control vertices for for nerves. So I'm just now manipulating points, faces, and edges, and I'm just about to start thinking about a track here. So I'm laying down one piece of the of the track, and I'm going across the volume that we used, and exactly as you would in any polygonal program, I'm just using a face, extruding it, you know, m manipulating the um, points with a, a tweak as we would call it, and then thinking at some point I'm going to have to subdivide this. So I'm thinking I'll keep it low polygon as long as I can because the minute you start adding complexity and then you want to move something, it's loads and loads of points to move. So it's just basic polygonal work. Um, and then wherever I'm going to subdivide, I have to think about doing protective edges. So you can just do, it's called a split loop uh, in any other program, and, and you can see me just doing it there with a click in, in gravity. Um, I was very lucky to be involved right from the beginning of this, so I did some videos that really, um, I hope, had a big impact on how this was developed. So I, I really like the, 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 the tools that are in this. There's many more that I want. Um, there's many more um, uh, polygonal workflow uh, features and tools that I, I would love but there's more than enough to be going on with so you know split loop extrude um, welding vertices the, the, the vertices there's there's plenty of, of of stuff to be getting on with without me moaning about what I don't have so I'm, I'm quite I'm quite happy with with what I've got at the moment so th there's nothing there that I couldn't use in another program so apart from accuracy of snapping um, this is how I would work in, in other programs. So I'm just using a combination of grab faces, extrude. This is the same now even in ZBrush with ZModeler. It's the same in, it's just normal polygonal modeling. So nothing nothing that you wouldn't see in other programs. It's just that you're in VR and, and it runs incredibly well. So it's as stable as you could, you could want it. I'm just putting extra loops in there so that when I do an extrusion, it's not going to meet the, the previous extrusion. And you can see there now that that would make a, you know, you can see pretty simply where this is going to go. This is going to be part of one track um, and then it's going to go all the way around. Now, when I model this, um, I'm again, you, you know, I must stress that I'm not saying that th this is how I model for production finished models. This is the way I model for um, for concepting. So I'm only looking for shapes and ideas that I can paint over or or repeat and, and, and use in, in my concept work. And, you know, if I was going to model this correctly, I would model that piece and then you know, and then basically run it around a spline around that shape. But I don't need that level of accuracy in VR. That's not what I'm doing this for. And later on, I would take this out and then I would I would literally um, use, you know, some feature that would spread it out evenly around around that backtrack. But from a uh, concept modeler's point of view, this is just great for, for getting those shapes um, and just seeing if it's it's going to work for you. You could see there what I did was I um, I wasn't happy with the way it was going. So I, I would love there isn't actually a, a you know a, a, or at least I don't think there is a, a project along a, a, a spline yet. Um, they could well be um, because they do update on an incredibly, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really quick turnaround for, 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 
their um, development cycle. So you can see there now I've got, um, I, you know, I've got quite a, a complex bike made already and I'm ready to move on to the next stage. So once I've made that um, the bike to that kind of level, I'll bring it out as an export. So I'll export it as an FBX or an OBJ, and that's going to carry the uh, colours that we we um, I described, and they're going to allow me to select by the material. You can see me uh, get, getting a bit um, fiddly there with the, with the tracks where they're not done very well. So I, I definitely would just take one of them and, and run it along a spl spline at a later stage. So I would select, um, uh, basically in the scene, I'd bring up what we call a render view for, for a redshift render view. I'd add in um, uh, a dome light. So I've got a HDRI in there. So that's giving me a real world reflection. And then I'd start working in the materials. So I'd be selecting all of the, you know, the black leathers. I would be selecting the, um, uh, the chromes, everything that I've described about uh, about the selecting um, uh, sets is, is now uh, is what you can see on screen now. So I'm really thinking about how do I want the the plastics to look? How do I want the um, um, you, you know do do I really want the, um, the 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 metal to be completely shiny or do I want it to be you know, rusted down. And again, I'm not looking for a render here that's going to be my final render. This is this is going to be used to paint over. This is going to be used to give me something to start showing how I would want this built. Um, and, and it would give me a, a really, really good start. I mean, I think this entire project is about an hour and a half at the moment. So by the end of that hour and a half, I probably would have a good enough set of renders to really paint it up to, to allow someone to model it fully. And then because you can give someone a model as well as the sketching and the painting, um, it does allow you to well, just put you further down the line than if you were just to hand over um, a really, a, you know, a, a really good painting is great, but then you give a model with it and you've got some, you've got some extra data there. You've got, you know, you, all of your scaling is, is able to be, um, you know, passed along down the line. So, and because we do a lot of this, this for our clients, we, you know, we may be actually the ones that would go on to model this correctly. And having that, you know, some of this is good geometry. So we might just take that as our base geometry and work on top of it. Uh, and some of it might be sculpted. So we might just take that geometry and take it into something like ZBrush or even back into VR with something like um, Adobe Medium or something like that. But that's pretty much how we would we would get to uh, a, a very fast uh, concept within VR. Um, it's one of the tools we use the most. Uh, it does allow us quite a lot of flexibility because it's got nerves and because it's got sketching and you know polygons as well. It's it's really really useful in in lots of different ways. Um, and where we take it from here, there's there's lots of of things that we would do. So one of my team might take it and paint over it. And as I've said, we use the iPad a lot for for Procreate work. We use the you know we use our big Cintiqs to do big paintings. Um, I, I probably with a project like this, I would almost be ready now to just show the client uh, one or two versions of this. Um, in turn round, in turntable, maybe, um, just to say, right, are we on the right track with the with the you know the the volumes? Is the are the tracks at the front the right scale? You know, do we feel that the trike is working, which is what he's specified he wants? So we'd be able to ask those questions just from those renders on the bottom right there. You could see that we, you know, with a little bit more work, you know, a little a little bit more tweaking, we could get to a point where we've got a a reasonably good looking design in an incredibly short space of time um, and that's what we're always looking at because we're you know we're a small independent company I, I'm always looking to turn stuff around you know with a maximum amount of time a, a minimum amount of time sorry um, you know but not compromise on what it looks like so we want we want fast ways to to, to generate shapes uh, you know good strong silhouettes good 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 strong design um, without spending days and days and days on it, um, simply because things need to be, you know, we, you know the way we work these days, it, it, it is, um, it's a hand to mouth kind of environment where you know clients want stuff, you know, yesterday as as they always have, I suppose. Um, so yeah, that's a good example of how we would approach a project like this, and a good 
overview of how we would use Gravity Sketch um, in our concept projects.